Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What a day it had been for Jesus. In fact, what a, what a week it had been for Jesus. The triumphal entry into Jerusalem, shouting, people shouting, acclamations, praise to God, confrontation with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law on that day and throughout the week. The Passover, the day in which any Jewish person would be filled with emotion, remembering how God had brought them out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land, the Exodus. And with all of this, Jesus also bears the thought that this is the last time that I get to eat with these friends of mine until that day when I shall have this meal anew in the kingdom of heaven when I return. The Last Supper then leads to the disciples going out with Jesus into the garden, the Garden of Gethsemane. And there Jesus, he brings his disciples, he says, sit here while I go over there to pray, and takes Peter, James, and John with him, and he is sorrowful and troubled. Isn't that the understatement of the year? Jesus knows he has been heading for this moment, telling his disciples over and over again, these are the things that are going to happen. Even at the meal, he says, someone who dips their bread in the same bowl will be lifting their foot against me. To his friend Peter, he says, you will betray me three times. And Peter swore up and down, never, Lord, not me. Jesus has got to be drained, right? Some have said that Jesus in the garden, as he prays, anguished as he was, as he says, I am overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Watch here with me, my friends. Some have suggested that Jesus, perhaps at that moment, it was as if everything was there. Perhaps the hardest moment of all for Jesus. I don't know that I would say that. I would say that this whole passion event, all that is going on on this evening and the next day, that together makes this the most overwhelming moment for Jesus. Perhaps you and I understand this a little bit. Our lives are filled with overwhelms, right? The overwhelming news that a relationship has gone south. The overwhelming news that your treatments are scheduled to start two weeks from now, and following that, we're going to do some radiation. And we still don't know whether that's going to help. The overwhelming news that the factory is closed, the jobs are ending. Is that not what gives some angst to the people in our country these days? The overwhelming news Life is filled with overwhelms, is it not? And yet none compares to that which Jesus bears as he's in the garden pleading with his Father. Father, if it's possible, take this cup from me, but not my will, let your will be done. Father, Father, as I hear those words, I almost think back to Abraham and his one and only son, Isaac, the son that Abraham and Sarah had to wait 25 years relying upon God's promise and sometimes relying on themselves and then going back to God's promise, this child of promise. And as Abraham is tested, he takes his son, according to God's instructions, with him. 
Isaac says, Father. Yes, son. The fire and wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. He certainly did for Abraham and Isaac, even more so providing the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who there in the garden is praying. Now our overarching theme has been five prayers that changed the world. How might this prayer have changed the world? Now it is this, that our Lord has changed the world. And it is with that prayer that our divine and human Lord, 100% God, 100% what it means to be human, lays it all out as he prays to his Father. He needs strength for this task. On the one hand, he needs no strength. He is God himself in the flesh. And on the other hand, he is in the flesh. And his life is going to be snatched from him. Or rather, he will lay it down only to take it up again. And so Jesus earnestly prays. In Luke's gospel, Luke notes that Jesus' sweat became as drops of blood. Luke also reminds us of how God provided an angel to strengthen Jesus. And the disciples, they're snoozing. Perhaps in the middle of life's overwhelms, sometimes we just want to lay down, crawl into a hole, and go to sleep. They were overwhelmed with sorrow, God's Word says. And to be sure, they ought to have been. They couldn't make full sense of their friend's words, their Lord's words, of what was going to happen. They could not fully understand or take in what was going to happen next. But all of this would be for them, for us, for the sake of the world. And so Jesus, he must pray. He does pray, and then the moment comes. The hour has come. Here comes my betrayer. From there, you and I, we know the story all too well. The sham trial before the Sanhedrin, and then the trial before Pilate, standing before Herod, back to Pilate, Crucify him. What sin has he done? He will bear your sin and mine. Because only in him, the one who bears the sin of the world, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, the one who, as he pleads with his Father, is actually pleading for us in some ways because he's asking for strength. Father, assure me that this is the only way. I will drink this cup. And he goes resolutely then to the cross for you and for me so that he might drink that cup even of death. And on the tree, overcoming death by his own death, and then from the tomb emerging, he brings us life. Have you been changed by this story? As God changes our lives daily by his power, daily by his word, by our our remembering that we are children of God by baptism, our coming to the sacrament of the altar, as God is in that transformation business. How will you pray? For whom will you be asking that they realize that all that Jesus has done was done for them. Would you join me in prayer? Lord Jesus, so often we think that we get it, that we understand how you 
felt or why you did what you did. This we know. It was for us and for our salvation that you gave your life. And it is by grace that we are saved. And yet, Lord, there is so much more to understand. Let our hearts ponder during the remainder of this Lenten season all that you endured for us in your passion in the garden, your pleas, your pleas for help from your Father, and the way in which then you going to the cross came to our aid. Strengthen us so that we might be your witnesses and so that we would ever share your love with a world that is desperately in need. In your precious name we pray. Amen.